it's time to do, 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 do. In this week's video, we're going to be diving deep into Rebuilds' lonely childhood love. We'll be turning a discarded Barbie into a sunflower princess modeled off of one of Rebuilds' favorite Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Rebuilds has collected many cards over the years, and he has his favorites, but we'll be focusing on one of the new cards that was added to the collection most recently. Marina, the Princess of Sunflowers, or Marena, the Princess of Sunflowers. I have no idea how to say it. Out of all the cards, I chose this card because I felt that I had the perfect Barbie for it. Speaking of which... I haven't seen many Barbies in my days, but this one has the cutest face I ever did saw. I can't believe someone threw her away. Now, the easy way to turn this Barbie into Marina is to just use Metamorphose on it. But that card's banned, so let's do it the hard way. If you've seen my last Barbie video, which is really good by the way, you would know that crafting foam was used to make the Barbie's armor. Well, this time I will be using it to make the dress. I picked these colors because it will make painting easier later. Hmm, I hear tiny fisticuffs going about. What's going on, Mikus? Eating all the peach? Kawhi Miku, did you eat that entire peach yourself? That was for everyone. Give me a break and shut up. You just bought yourself a ticket to the corner, little lady. Huh? Where did you get perfectly scaled Yu-Gi-Oh cards? You activate a trap! What? Scrap Iron Scarecrow? Starting with the pink foam, I cut out roundy squarey bits and glued them on the Barbie's chest. I filled out the rest with... Rectangles! Next, I added some flower petals made out of foam. To make her necklace, I added shining rhinestones around her neck. I chose these shimmering rhinestones because I don't plan on painting them later. Whoa, you see how bad that edge looks? Let's cover it up with tiny circle detail that I made from just, you know, scrap paper and my hole punch. Evil! To finish off the necklace, I have these small sunflowers that I will glue right here, but later. After a lot of research, I couldn't find any reference material on the Sunflower Princess's lower half, so I had to take creative liberties with her legs. I cut long leaf-shaped strips of green foam and wrapped them around each leg to make it look like she's wearing plant-style leggings or tights. I don't know what you call them. Rebuilds doesn't know anything about women's fashion. While I had the green foam still on my desk, I cut out two leaves and glued them on her shoulders for a little taste of the 80s fashion. To finish off this foam circus, I cut out two spiky looking strips of pink foam and glued them on her forearms. These will become the tops of her gloves. Okay, the Barbie's clothing is done. She needs paint, but we'll hold off on that until later so we can focus on making the daunting sunflower. The sunflower will have a lot of weight on it, so we need some sturdy garbage. I picked this Nivea cold cream cap. I cut the guts out of it, then beat it up a bit with sandpaper until it was prepared for the clay and me. I'm using air dry clay to cover the whole cap. I got this clay from Walmart. I don't think there's anything special about it, other than the monstrosity of a price. Once I had complete coverage, I set it aside and turned to making the sunflower nubs, I guess? I started out by rolling out the clay snakes. I cut them up into, I don't know, maybe a millimeter in length. I attempted to apply the noodles to the top of the cap, but I didn't like how that looked. So before I wasted any more time on this, I used the card Second Coin Toss to start over. Instead of clay snakes, I decided to use these pink beads because I don't have to make them and they're all uniform in size and shape, exactly what is needed for the sunflower. I glued the beads together into a circle, which was a lot harder than I thought. Then I put it on the dry cap base, and then I filled in the edges with more clay. Once that was done, I just had to fill the rest of the space in. So I used emergency teleport and was able to skip forward where it was all done. 
After everything was dry, I spray painted the sunflower base with primer because those beads would be very hard to paint later without it. Next on the list is making all the leaves and petals, and we need a lot of them, so I made these foam templates of the two petal shapes we require. I like this new clay so far, so let's use it again for the flowers. Starting with the big leaves, these are the green ones by the way, I smashed some clay into my template, then with a wet finger I smoothed out the surface to prepare it for some detailing. Using a sculpting tool, I created that leaf line look. After that, I carefully demolded it, and before drying, I wanted to add some floral wire for when I attach these leaves to the sunflower base. I stabbed the wire into the leaf, and to get that leaf shape, I placed the clay baby on a spoon and left it to dry. As for the yellow leaves, I did the exact same thing, but with a smaller template and a smaller spoon. After I summoned Lava Golem to the leaves side of the field, they dried much faster and we could move on to sanding them into their final shape. I did this for the next two hours, but it wasn't too bad. I popped in some headphones and listened to one of the greatest pieces of music that this world has ever heard. I'm of course talking about the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's opening song. It's a minute of divine heavenly bliss. If you haven't heard it, go check it out. And after that, go check out this dude's guitar version of the song. You'll thank me later. Trust me. Okay, time for painting. And I had to use the card time chain to tie me down because rebuilds don't like painting. Let's start with the Barbie because it's pretty straightforward. Rebuilds loves metallic and he's excited because he gets to use this beautiful dark purple metallic on the Barbie's clothing. Very nice. As for her long gloves, I'm straight up painting the metallic on and look at that coverage. I love how that came out. Next is her leaf tights pants thingies. I used this dark green to paint the leaves and I was pretty casual with it. I didn't give it a second coat of paint because I liked how the spotted looked well looked. I also used the same green to paint the leaves on her shoulders. With the base coats done, we can move on to detailing and this silver metallic is what we're starting with. I painted the four leaves that make up her necklace. Why silver? Because it's canon, of course. Next, I painted the rhinestones on her outfit, and when that was done, we could finally finish the necklace by gluing on the small sunflower from earlier. The painting for the Barbie is done, so let's switch to the sunflower itself. I started with a dark brown base coat, and I watered down the paint a little so I could fill in all the nooks and crannies. But wow, that's too much water in that paint. Let's redo that with uh, about 90% less water. Much better. After that dried, I used a lighter brown, and I didn't dry brush it on per se, I kinda just wet brushed it on. I did this because, you know, I have no idea how to paint properly, and I wanted to retain the dark brown underneath. The next paint I used is this dark yellow called King's Gold, and this is a true dry brushing. I'm only just hitting the very edges to create a nice highlight. The Barbie and the Sunflower base are ready to become one. Once a lot of glue was applied, the Sunflower base was attached, but at what cost? Well, see this nasty gap? We're going to have to fill that. I'm going to use some air dry clay. Since the clay was white, I mixed in some dark brown paint, but it didn't get as dark as I wanted it. I, I don't know why, it's just this clay would not accept the paint, I guess. But it doesn't really matter, because I'm going to paint it anyway. Once I filled in all the gaps with the clay, I let it fully dry, and then I painted it in the same colors as the sunflower base. Okay, let's switch to the sunflower leaves. I applied a coat of Mod Podge over all the leaves and flower petals, then I used this Christmas green as the base coat. Once dry, I wet brushed it with a very light green, just as I did with the sunflower base, because I wanted to retain the dark color underneath. I painted every single one like this, and I really like how these leaves came out. Next up are the smaller flower petals and I base coated these with an appropriately named yellow, named yellow. <laughs> After base coating, I used this orange to manually paint in the dark shadowing with Rebuilds' smallest brush he owns. The last thing I did was wet brush this very light yellow on each petal, and I did this for about 17 hours, and then I was finally done. 
What you're looking at isn't even all the ones I ended up making for this build. I hear some type of shenanigans going on. What are you up to, Kwai Miku? Oh no! Where you going? You may have gotten away with not going to the corner earlier, but I'll get you this time. Heh, <laughs> I'm aware of your scrap iron scarecrow. That's why I brought my own trap, Dark Bribe. By giving you a dollar, I can destroy your trap, and once destroyed, you're going to the corner. Wrong! You activate Call of the Haunted? What are you gonna bring back with that? There's nothing- Ooh. Everything is painted, so let's start assembling. First, the green leaves. I drilled holes so I could thread the wire through. I purposely positioned them into a dress shape. I think that was the best way to do it. Next up is the yellow petals, and I placed these in the same way as the green leaves. I made about 20 yellow petals, and the moment I started, I knew that I didn't make enough. Which is fine, it's just another two hours of work for me. For you guys, just a video transition. Well, look at that, we're done with the petals. Just like earlier, I added some clay around the petals, and after some touch-up painting, I can see that this Barbie has now transformed into Marina, or Morena. I still don't know how to say it. But she's not a princess of sunflowers until she's crowned. So let's go make that. I started with a plain strip of foam, but I quickly spiced it up a bit with some spiky cuts and dark green paint. Then I glued on some small clay petals, and while that dried, I worked on the centerpiece of the headdress. I found this charm that was perfect for it. After a trimming, a quick adding of a bead, and a perfectly matched paint job, I finished the centerpiece off with two green clay leaves. I glued the two pieces together, and it was almost done. We just have to make the top part, which I will be using, you guessed it, crafting foam. I cut it into kind of a fan shape, gave it a purple metallic base coat, then I painted the detail on using acrylic ink markers, or cheat markers like I like to call them. Once that was dry, I glued it on, which meant the crown was done, but Marina, or Morena, wasn't ready yet for it, because she needs some last minute detailing as well. Let's start with some leaf earrings. Yeah, very nice. How about some detailing on her gloves? That's always good. Let's finish off with a poorly drawn upside down pitchfork. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I think it's time to crown Barbie as the princess of sunflowers. Well, here we are at the end. If you enjoyed this Yu-Gi-Oh! slash Barbie build, please share it with your Yu-Gi-Oh! slash Barbie friends. I would, but Rebuild has no friends. Well, besides the Mikus, and I'm being forced to say that. If you like this video and what Rebuilds is building here and you want to help out, well, all you need to do is like and subscribe. That small action helps out tremendously. Make sure you check out the links in this video's description. You won't regret the time you spent on those videos for sure. Okay guys, I say goodbye, but not the long goodbye, but a brief, tearful one. Remember, be kind, rewind, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.